Good morning and welcome to today's AM Minnesota program. We are going to be talking about one of the one of my favorite annual events every year, the Faribault Chamber of Commerce Agribusiness Committee's Farm Business Luncheon. Although I'm a little old fashioned, I call it our Thanksgiving luncheon. <laughs> Kim Hoverson is in studio. She's very active with the Faribault Chamber of Commerce Agribusiness Committee. And Kim, you're also very active with the Faribault Chamber of Commerce. But is it one of your favorite activities of the year, too? This is one of the favorite activities. You know, it's kind of the culmination of the year. It's an absolutely phenomenal luncheon. We always have a great speaker. And it just kind of brings the entire year together for the farming community. We always get a lot of farmers and agribusiness people. We always get a few of our non-farming friends too, and that's kind of the idea. Let's sit down and have kind of a Thanksgiving dinner together. Absolutely, and it also gives them a chance just to kind of crack the shell and see a little bit of what's going on in agriculture in that other business that's part of the Chamber of Commerce. And we have to say special thanks to the Federal Chamber of Commerce Agribusiness Committee and some of the staff out at the chamber for helping the, the committee be so active. We do a lot of things throughout the year, and this is kind of, as you mentioned, kind of the, the culmination of our year, and we kick off again after the holidays. We do. We Our, our biggest, I think, event of the year is probably our Adopt a Third Grade program, and, and we talk a little bit about it throughout the year, but I, I think it's the one that I'm most proud of. I think that the third graders in this area uh, have really gotten to uh, experience agriculture in a different way. They've been able to hear about it in their classroom and they've been able to go out on the farms and see it. And every year this particular group, farm business group, puts together that and makes it all happen. And you think, well, Fairbowl's a rural community, so all these kids would know all about this. <laughs> no, they don't. No, no, they don't. And, and you'd be surprised how many of these kids have never been on a farm before and, and may never be on a farm again. But it gives them a chance to see where their food sources come from. We try to get them to, uh, we've had them at dairy farms, hog farms. We've had them at a, number of, farms. We've, we've had them at a number of different facilities. So they get, it, get to at least get a chance to see how production happens and where these um, animals in particular or where corn and soybeans are growing. We have to take a break for the market it's in about two and a half minutes. So let's spend that time just going over the details of the farm business uh, luncheon. Uh, once again, everyone is welcome. Absolutely, everyone's welcome. Tickets are available at the Chamber of Commerce. You don't even need to pick them up, per se. All you need to do is call and order your ticket. You can pick it up at the door on the day of the luncheon. The luncheon is scheduled for November 19th, and of course, once again, it's held at the Knights of Columbus. The Knights of Columbus group here in Fairbrook do an absolutely phenomenal job. They do Good a great job. Good turkey and dressing. Yeah, Jerry, don't worry about the food. <laughs> Along with the is, is anyone out there surprised? <laughs> I don't see any hands raised. I didn't think so. Uh, the luncheon starts about 11.30, and uh, we, we made a... A choice to serve it rather quickly as people come in everybody gets to go right through the line so that kind of family style then go family through. style yes absolutely and then we can get uh, to the best part or, or the other part which is all of the uh, presentations and our speaker it's kind of nice to bring in you know, the farm family of the year the outstanding conservationist all of those in Rice County or surrounding areas that kind of had some recognition throughout the year, recognize them before we get to our speaker. Yes, yeah, it really is. Art Matson has helped us out with that year after year. and has Does a great job great. other than his jokes. <laughs> I happen to think his jokes are really good. Yeah, maybe because I'm usually, never mind. Yeah, that would be true. <laughs> Jerry's usually the end of that joke. But, uh, yeah, he does a great job and uh, lets us know who's received awards throughout the year and who's been recognized. and and keeps us abreast of what's going on out in the ag community. And our, we always get a really neat speaker. Our speaker this year, pretty exciting. Yeah, it is. We are very excited. Al Fleiss is our speaker. We are very blessed. We are very happy to have Al here in Fairville talking to us. And of course, he's been a marketing specialist for, well, I think, his whole career, and maybe we have to say thank you to his brother, Farrell Kleiss, for kind of organizing that. We, we may have to say thank you to Farrell for <laughs> helping us just a bit on that. Kim Halverson is in studio, my guest on today's AM Minnesota program. Kim, very involved with the Fairbow Chamber of Commerce 
and also the Agribusiness Committee. Jim, it's kind of fun to be involved in the Agribusiness Committee. Not that many chambers and communities actually have an Agribusiness Committee. We have a pretty active one. We have a very active Agribusiness Committee, and, and throughout the state, I believe there are only six or eight active Agribusiness Committees. Waseca does have one as well. And Mankato has a very active And board. Mankato has ramped theirs up and has become very active, but there are not a lot of chambers that uh, have active Agribusiness Committees. So we're, we're very blessed in this community to have a very active Agribusiness Committee. Well, before the market break, we were talking about, about the Fairbrook Chamber of Commerce Agribusiness Committee. Big event of the year, kind of a culmination of all the activities we do throughout the year, the farm business luncheon. I still call it the Thanksgiving luncheon, even though it is not Thanksgiving. It's getting close. It is getting close, and of course, Jerry would think about the food part, which is You got really a problem well with turkey and dressing, do you? No, I don't, <laughs> and, and I'll tell you what, the Knights of Columbus do a great job on our luncheon, and we really encourage everyone to come. It's well worth uh, the ticket cost, and uh, and you're really going to enjoy the day. The time will go very quickly, and you're going to hear a lot about what's going on in the Faribault area as far as award-winning uh, producers, as well as Al Kleiss as our featured speaker this year. We always seem to be able to get in a very interesting speaker each year, wasn't it? Was it last year? We had the Minnesota State demographer. Uh, what was his? Yes. Gillespie, maybe? Uh, yep, yeah, Tom Gillespie. Yeah. yeah, he was interested. So we always try and get a speaker that isn't just specifically about agriculture, but kind of looks at the, the bigger perspective. And, of course, Al Kleist, being a marketing specialist, he's looking at the whole world picture. He is. He absolutely is. And, and he's, I think he's world-renowned. So for him to be here in Faribault is awesome. And, of course, we had just a little bit of pull on that. Uh, <laughs> his brother, Farrell, does live here in Faribault and is on our Agribusiness yeah. Committee. So I'm not sure why we didn't think of this before, <laughs> but uh, we're very excited to have Host Al here in Faribault and have him here to, uh, to share his um, a little bit of what he has to say with us and and uh, I'm kind of looking forward to his world perspective because it, in our world, we are in a world market, but really the, the average consumer, the citizen, what's happening maybe in China or Russia affects them too, even maybe they aren't quite noticing it. Absolutely. The world markets uh, affect right here in Minnesota more than many people know. And uh, I'm sure Al will give us a great perspective on that. Just in the turkey world alone, you know, many of you have heard about AI, uh, avian influenza, that our markets were hit with this spring. And that came directly out of China. Um, it came through the uh, flyways, and uh, we dealt with that this spring. Now, this fall... Um, I've been holding my breath, but I keep thinking, no news is good news. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and as an industry, we paid attention and said, you know, maybe we need to ramp up biosecurity. Maybe we need to do things just a little bit different. And, and so hopefully, you know, many of those things that we've done um, will stop any more introductions. It was amazing when you think about it, though. What was it, 108 farms? 108 farms total. That we had the policies and procedures in place as to how to quarantine these farms, how to deal with it uh, so that it didn't spread anymore. I mean, and we got all 108 farms cleaned up and they've all been repopulated too, haven't they? The, at least the vast majority of them now. Most have been repopulated. I believe there was one grower who chose to just say, you know, I'm done. I, I'm going to fold it in. And his buildings were older and, you know. Maybe he could. And it was time. Retire or yeah, it was the, time. It was just the writing was on the wall. But there was a great response and just tremendous team effort between the Minnesota Department of Agriculture, the Minnesota Board of Animal Health. And when you get to an outbreak of this size, they relied a lot on the USDA and APHIS. And it was just a lot of coordination to try and get this stopped so we could move on to producing Thanksgiving dinners. <laughs> well, absolutely, and, and I also want to recognize, you know, you recognize Minnesota Department of Ag, but I also want to recognize the governor's office. The governor's office did step up and put a coordinator in place, 
and worked directly with the governor. And there were several orders, directives that were issued by the governor to help the industry um, deal with the issues we were dealing with at the time and to help the industry move forward. So uh, Governor Dayton did step up to the plate and did a nice job of helping the industry as well. There was a time when this was continuing to spread and you thought, boy, this is really serious. Well, I was wondering if uh, we were going to have turkey for Thanksgiving this year. It, it did occur to me, could it get that bad? Well, we, we actually, you know, in the grand scheme of things, the, as many people know, the Minnesota, Minnesota is the home of the largest turkey production in the United States. And so in the grand scheme of things, uh, the AI issue took out about 15%. And 15% doesn't sound like a whole lot, although Gary or Jerry's already talked about the numbers, 108 farms and, and I don't know how many million turkeys, I want to say 41 million or something Somewhere like that. It was, it was a lot. It was a big number. So, and, and repopulation has started and that's always a, that's always a, a uh, process as well because as many of you may or may not know, the breeder industry was uh, severely affected and you know, that goes back to the old chicken and the egg, which comes first. So. When the breeder industry is so heavily affected, I mean, I don't think there was a breeder bird left in Candy, Ohio County. And that is a major hub of breeding. Yeah. And Steve, what I was thinking is, well, turkeys, you know, poultry, you can gear up again very quickly. Not until one of the interviews I did with Kim when she said, well, we took out a lot of the breeder farms. You need the turkeys to lay the eggs <laughs> to, to get more turkeys to put in a barn. So. Absolutely, and, and we, our industry people, there's a lot of people in our industry who work with us, and including uh, Hybrid and, and Nicholas and, and companies like that, and I will tell you, their, their people were all over the world trying to find us eggs. We had eggs coming in from everywhere. We had eggs flowing in on red eyes. We had, they bent over backwards to get us what we needed so we could get this industry back ramped up and running. And see, this is the things that goes on in the background. That the average consumer, well, you know, I can always have a turkey sandwich at you know, Jimmy John's or supper, wherever I want to, or go to the grocery store, hmm, I'm hungry for you know, a turkey dinner from the deli. It's always there, you, but you don't realize sometimes what people in the industry do in the background to make sure that happens. And that's kind of what this farm business luncheon is all about too. It is. It is about recognizing the industry, and not only the turkey industry, but um, the dairy industry, the beef industry, the hog industry, all of the meat producing, as well as corn and soybean. Corn and soybean is huge in this area in particular. And you know, someone asked me a long time ago. We only we only produce three and a half million pounds a year. And, and someone asked me, you know, do you grow all your own corn and soybeans? And I said I'd need six thousand acres to do that, just to feed that three and a half billion pounds out. So. I, have, I rely on a lot of producers in this area for corn and soybeans. As the, the industry, and maybe that's why the livestock industry is flourishing up here because we have lots of corn and soybeans, or in the case of cattle, you know, we can raise lots of forage. Exactly, exactly. They're all tied together, and of course it always ends up being a little bit about balance. You know, you need enough corn and soybeans coming in, and we still export quite a few, uh, qu quite a lot actually, of corn and soybeans out of this area. So. Um, we both export and we run it through our um, products that we grow, including dairy and beef and so forth. When the avian influenza is starting to spread, I remember thinking that I was up at the Midwest Poultry Federation annual convention and we had one or two barns. And, oh, no big deal because uh, they found it because they test all the barns all the time and so they found it quickly. You know, this will go away and everything will be fine. And, all at once there was another one, and another one, and another one, and I'm thinking, oh boy, this is, is really getting serious now. It was. It was very serious. It was very serious, and I give, I send kudos out to our uh, association, Minnesota Turkey Growers, um, yeah, and Minnesota Research and Promotion Council, which I sit on. I mean, the people in our offices just stepped up to the plate, and they batted mm -hmm. out of the park. Mm -hmm. The media that they had to deal with was unbelievable. And see, that was my first fear as it started going, that those that are opposed to animal agriculture think that Jerry shouldn't be able to eat, in this case, turkey or meat, that they would start to hype on the food safety scare, well, it's not safe to eat turkey. And 
that never got going. Of course, it wasn't. The, this was a production issue. This wasn't a consumer issue with food safety. But I thought there were those that would try and hype it up, and they didn't. Or, or maybe it was because Steve and the rest of his staff were so willing to I talk to the media that they could always keep that fire from getting going, maybe. Absolutely. You know, we worked close. We, well, our industry works closely with APHIS anyway. So um, we're we're on top of it. The staff is unbelievable. They were on top of it. Laura Ginsburg, uh, Durbin has just done an unbelievable job as media coordinator, and she reached out to the board, uh, which I sit on. And you know, normally throughout a year, I'll do um, anywhere from three to six uh, media uh, presentations, normally around the Thanksgiving time. And last year, I did um, 68. Yeah. And not to mention Steve. She was coordinating the schedule, and Steve must have just been on his phone doing interviews continually for he days. Was. He was. There were times where he was sitting in an airport heading to some something as he was doing an interview, driving to the airport doing an interview. Um, they used their time very wisely to get that information out. And apparently it worked, and it's great to see the industry getting back the industry's so, ramping back up, and, and of course, with it ramping back up, we're we're blessed to have lots of turkey to eat this this coming fall as you head into the Thanksgiving time. I encourage you to do that, and you'll notice that the prices <laughs> don't really reflect it either. Yeah. You know, we've done a great job of keeping the prices fairly in line. I don't call it Thanksgiving; I call it National Turkey Day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, the turkey was supposed to be the national bird. Yeah. Ben Franklin wanted uh, the turkey to be the national bird. And, and we ended up with the eagle instead. And we ended we? up with the eagle, which is a predator, by the way. So. Well, speaking of national birds, I don't know if you've noticed, but the last few years I'm starting to see a lot of wild turkeys. There are a ton of wild turkeys out there. And it, it was, really must are. have been 10, 15 years ago I saw these first big brown birds, and I couldn't figure out for the life of me what that was. And I asked my dad, and he said, oh, that's a wild turkey. And they've really made a comeback. They have, and uh, a lot of people in the area like to hunt them. And actually, considering how the stories I hear, people constantly telling me, you know, turkeys are, are, are dumb. The hunters would. They beg to differ. They beg that. to differ. <laughs> I, I think the my favorite story was the guy who said he he could hear the turkey, and he just had spent an hour, two hours sitting under this tree looking for it. And he waited and waited, and he could hear it, but he just couldn't see it, and, and finally realized it was right above him on the branch. <laughs> And you mentioned that even though all of those birds we lost last summer, the prices for turkey pretty similar to previous years then. Yeah, yeah, the market's coming back well, and uh, this industry knows, knows how to produce, and uh, we'll continue to do that. And, and of course, the great part is we'll have this turkey dinner for our <laughs> luncheon coming up. And, and I'm excited about it. I'm excited to honor many of the people who have done some phenomenal things for the ag industry. I mean, during the summer, uh, some of you may have been part of the uh, the process we do during the fair, the yeah, uh, best of, of the best. Yeah, Hall of Fame program. Hall of the Fame. And of course, Art Spearheads That does absolutely a great job. Except his jokes again. <sighs> And uh, recognizes some really great people. We have recognized some pretty phenomenal people here in the agricultural world. I remember two or three year ago, years ago, Lashbrook. Mm -hmm. And I am to find out, here's this dairy farmer that was in northern Rice County by North Hill. And what did uh, Larry Tandy, he did the research on a purebred uh, Holstein breeder, something like 75, 80, or 90 percent of all the Holsteins in the country have some genetics tied back to Rice County. And if we wouldn't have had these programs, we wouldn't know those th sort of things. No, and that's what, that's part of the reason we do have the programs is so we can roll out the best of the best. And we have many of those people sitting right here in Rice County who have supported the industry, done great things in the industry, and made agriculture grow in this, in in this area. And that's why it's nice. This is almost like the best of the best part two with turkey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the luncheon is coming up and we want to encourage you to get tickets. Again, you can call the call the uh, chamber office and the number is 334-4381, I think. Yes, I'm right. And um, tickets are just $15, so call, order your tickets, and uh, 
make sure you have tickets set aside if you're from if you're not from the Faribault area and would like to come you're welcome as well it's not just for the Faribault community if you're from the surrounding communities and would love to come and hear Al talk about marketing you're welcome to come as well and so just call and order your tickets 334-4381 remember that date is Thursday November 19th the luncheon starts about 11:30. we technically say 11:45, but you know, get there early before Jerry eats. And oh, did I say that? Yeah. Sorry. Uh, don't worry, Rick always has lots of food. So. <laughs> and we should mention too, we, we kind of like to know a ways ahead of time so we can plan closely for lunch. But you always plan for 10, 15, 20 extra. So if you find out at the last minute you didn't think you could go, but you could go, I'll bet we'd have some food for you there. I think so, and, and I want to recognize our sponsors too, yes, Jerry, yes. we have some really great sponsors again this year, Reliance Bank is our uh, major sponsor, Farmers Union Insurance, Biowood Processing LLC from Faribault, American Family Insurance, Barton Jackson, Environmental Tillage Systems, Jenny o Turkey Store, Ag Star, Home Mortgage Service, Farm Bureau Financial Services, Dan Pumper, Wells Fargo, State Bank of Faribault, Comprehensive Wealth Solutions, Faribault Farm and Home, Just Ask Rental, First United Bank, Matichek Implement Company, Central Valley Cooperative, Plum Disposal, Cargill Cares, Upper Midwest Management Corp, and Wholesale Tire and Wheel. And all of those are our great sponsors. They help, uh, they help a lot of people with agriculture. Every one of those has some agricultural tie, I can tell you that. And make sure you thank those businesses for sponsoring this event, but also for being here in the Faribault area in the Rice County area and supporting agriculture. They need that thank you once in a while too. Well, all of those businesses probably wouldn't be here if it wouldn't be for production agriculture in the area. Absolutely. You know, a long time ago someone said, well, there aren't that many um, people involved in agriculture in this area that belong to the chamber. And, and I said, I beg to differ. And I took the list out and said, and this one, and this one. And, and I think the people I was sitting around at the time were just really surprised about with the tie-ins. You know, they some of the thought process was that Jenny O Turkey Store is a production plant. Well, it's tied to agriculture without uh, they don't turkeys, have turkeys coming in. The process, uh, There's no, no <laughs> processing going on. So they all are. Faribault Foods. Uh, the list goes on. It's it's long. Matichex. You know, um, if you can't go out and buy a bobcat or a um, tractor. You know, you need those things in production agriculture. So there are just a lot of businesses in our area that are tied to agriculture. And if you're one of those businesses and you're not currently a member of the chamber, give them a call, 334-4381. Ask to talk to Barb. Barb will come on out and talk to you a little bit about membership. You may be surprised what, um, what membership with the chamber can do for your business and help it grow, but also, um, you know, you can uh, be part of a farm business group. I was thinking, uh, join the chamber mm -hmm. one step farther, then join the agribusiness committee. Exactly. We're always looking for new members as well. It's a small group. It's, uh, it's uh, I don't know, 10, 15 yeah, people. 10 we meet at uh, noon. It's 12 to 1. It doesn't take a lot of time out of your day. But once a month, some months once we month. skip uh, because, you know, like the holidays and we are organizing too many things in December, for example. But exactly so we'd love to have another member or two or six we would love to have you be part of it and if you're a producer out there and you're in your combine you're listening today and you're thinking well I'm just I'm a farmer I don't need to be part of the chamber well you know the last I checked you're a farm business <laughs> and and you look at today's farms uh, compared to a lot of businesses in main street communities farmers are Huge business when you look at the revenue and the dollars and big business and and yes there are some really great things that you can get out of the chamber as well give Barb a call and ask her what they are and that's again three three four four three eight one remember those tickets are fifteen dollars please get them ordered and so we can kind of try and get a head count uh, Casey's does like if we can get a pretty close head count but as Jerry commented if you come to the door you're gonna get a ticket. And the first benefit to come to the committees is you get to laugh at everybody's jokes picking on Jerry. That is <laughs> that true. That does happen a time or two at our meetings, doesn't it? At least once or twice at a meeting. Oh, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> yeah, and I never pick on anybody, but it just oh, sure. happens that way. <laughs> but we try and have fun, too, and we try and do something important, educate people about agriculture, but 
we have fun and like to laugh and do some of those things too. We do, and, and just a note about Al Kleiss, if you haven't heard of him, which I can hardly believe if you're sitting on this channel right now, you haven't, because you hear him all the time. He's been a commodity advisor and broker since 76. He is president and managing partner of uh, Kleiss Commodities in Lizetta, Minnesota, and he writes a column, Your Profit, which appears in every issue of Successful Farming Magazine. He was an expert columnist for Corn and Soybean Digest for 13 years, and the magazine featured his marketing strategies column in every issue. He's published two books on commodity training, trading, and he's co-authored on the first book. Lauren Krauss is new editor-in-chief of Successful Farming Magazine. So quite a pedigree there. <laughs> he he is, and I can't. Yeah, he's he's going to be a great speaker. I already know that. You need to be there. You need to get your tickets. Get get a. Get them ordered if you're in, in the combine in the tractor right now. Just no, always do is call and say, call and say I, I need to order a couple of tickets and uh, have them set aside for you just so we can get a head count. And uh, although, you know, if it's the last plate there and you come, Jerry will be willing I'll, to give up. I'll his. sacrifice mine. Yeah, <laughs> right. November 19th, give the chamber a call and think about joining the chamber and get involved with the Agribusiness Committee. We, Absolutely, we'd love to have more members. So we're really, we would really encourage you to do that. And again, as I said, you are a business. As a ag producer, you're welcome to join. Give Barb a call. Only a minute left. Anything else you'd like to mention? Here's your last chance to pretend you're Art and get a shot in at me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't come prepared with jokes because uh, I thought Art was uh, going to be with us today, uh, and I knew he'd have at least three or four. Well, you know, those people, they're kind of busy. Yeah. Well, he is very busy right now. I'm sure that he's seeing his producers as they're bringing in the crop right now. And uh, I want to send out my prayers to you as you are doing that. Stay safe. Be safe. Thanks for stopping by, Kim. You're welcome, Jerry. Thanks for letting us talk about the Agribusiness Committee and the luncheon. Kim Halverson with the Fairbrook Chamber of Commerce Agribusiness Committee. Once again, November 19th. Starting about 1130, if you have to leave early before it's wrapped up, that's fine too. We'd still love to have you. Have you. So contact the chamber office.